So this next week is uh, 2016 Get Smart About Antibiotics Week, um, which sounds like a, something that medical people would get excited about, but we as uh, patients and parents of patients should also be excited about it. So why do we need a week to get smart about antibiotics? Yeah, antibiotics have really come to the forefront in the last several years because we're having a lot of infections that are becoming resistant to certain antibiotics that we use. Over 2 million illnesses and 23,000 deaths a year can be contributed to antibiotic-resistant antibiotic infections or bacteria. So as a result, the CDC and a lot of the medical community has decided to make an awareness week so that we can inform the public on how we can limit the use of antibiotics not using antibiotics inappropriately and also making sure that people wash their hands appropriately and get vaccinated for all the preventable diseases including influenza this time of year so that we do not keep using antibiotics inappropriately which then would lead to more resistance and more complications as we go from here so maybe just to back up a little bit um, some of us have a vague idea of bacterial versus viral infections, but what does that mean? <laughs> the difference between a bacteria and a virus is the way they're formed. Bacteria are infections that are killed by antibiotics. Viruses do not get killed by antibiotics, and we really need to make sure that if somebody does have a virus, like a typical cold or or throat infections that majority of those upper respiratory infections are viruses and that antibiotics do not work for those because they're not bacterial infections. Okay, so I think for a long time, um, the, the green snot, let's talk about that. <laughs> That's how I was, if it's green, it's bacterial. Yeah, and that's a huge common misnomer is that green snot, thick snot, is more of a sign of a bacterial infection. But as we're having more complicated and sophisticated laboratory studies to be able to identify more viruses, we're finding that even if you have green slot, snot, the majority of those infections and those colds are still related to viruses. That, that snot can go from green to yellow to clear, and anywhere in between, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bacterial infection. So the thing that parents and that we need to know is when do we live with it and when do we check it out? Probably, right? And then when do we say it's okay that I don't have an antibiotic? <laughs> It's always hard to know if an antibiotic is needed or not needed, and that's why anytime you do feel like an illness is lasting longer than what it may have in the past, that you should always go to your medical provider. They're the ones who have the expertise to be able to further distinguish if it is a viral infection or a bacterial infection. However, I do want to make sure that people realize that even if you're getting an antibiotic, doesn't always mean that it's necessarily going to work. We always are trying to have our patients question the doctors more, more frequently now to see if there's any other alternative ways that the person can get over that infection before having to use antibiotics. So part of this probably really relates to um, we just want a quick fix and we think that's what antibiotics are. Yeah, and unfortunately that's how people see it is that I get my antibiotics, I'll feel better in a day or two, and then I can go back to work. What happens a lot of times is by the time the people get the antibiotics, their viral infection is already starting to improve, and that they would have got better within a couple days, even without the antibiotics. So um, <clears throat> let's go a little further then. Can you give us a layman's explanation about how do we get resistant, and then what are these superbugs? <laughs> resistance comes from a multiple different ways. A lot of times if an antibiotic, when it is given, and when it's given appropriately, if it is not the correct length, 
or if you don't treat for long enough, the infection can come back and be resistant to that antibiotic. If the infection is treated for too long with antibiotics, that can lead to death of all the good bacteria that's in the body as well. If the inappropriate antibiotic is also picked, because we have a large number of different antibiotics, and if a medical provider picks the wrong one, then it will not allow for appropriate killing of the infection that you're trying to treat. Now we do have quite a few of antibiotics on the market. The problem is that we are seeing more resistance to the bacteria than we are having new antibiotics made and developed for the market. So we're starting to lose some of those that we can't use, but we aren't having new ones that are being developed. So in terms of length of time, this is, I use an antibiotic that wasn't appropriate. I develop a resistance. I have that resistance going forward? Yeah, the resistance can, Make it so make it so we can understand it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. Once you develop resistance to a certain antibiotic, then that can be with you the rest of your life. One of the major infections that we see and what people hear about these days is called MRSA, and that's an antibiotic that's resistant to the penicillins or amoxicillins, and that bacteria can live on you the rest of your life. So anytime you get an infection that flares up with that bacteria, that MRSA, such as a ear infection or a lung infection or a skin infection, stronger antibiotics are needed to be able to fight that infection. And once you start having a resistant antibiotic bacteria right away, that bacteria can learn about new antibiotics as it gets exposed to it and even develop more resistance to even more antibiotics the more that your body is exposed to those different antibiotics. That's frightening. Yeah, it, it is very frightening and that's the concern and that's why the medical community and the government and the CDC is working very hard to be able to curb the overuse of antibiotics. They estimate about one out of every three antibiotic prescription that is written by a provider is not medically indicated. A couple reasons why that physicians are overprescribing is because there's pressure on them by the parents or the patients to be able to get their kids or themselves feeling better faster. So people still think that's the quick fix. And so that's our job in the medical community is to be able to educate parents that antibiotics are not the quick fix, that your child or you yourself may have a cold for seven all the way up to 14 days and that is a normal duration of symptoms. Now if there's secondary complications that you're worried about, such as breathing issues, not necessarily cough, but breathing issues, or you're getting worse or fevers are lasting longer than five to seven days, those are some indications that you need to get checked out by a medical care provider. So you just taught me something. I, I kind of thought that um, superbugs were like things that were out there that would jump on me. <laughs> but really it's, it's what I'm doing to my body and or what I'm doing to my child's body by begging for or mm -hmm pressuring yep. you to give me an antibiotic because I want to feel better right now. I'm putting myself at higher risk for later. Mm -hmm. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary, Jesse. <laughs> you got to just say it that way. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> if parents knew that, if par I mean, if, if we could get parents to understand mm -hmm. when you push for this antibiotic because yep. you don't want poor Johnny to suffer mm -hmm. more than five days, he could get MRSA and die. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's not going to say it that well, way. Well, no. I'm trying, I'm trying to redo what Kim says. And that's the scary part when we give so many antibiotics is that with these super infections, with these antibiotic resistance, as we get further down the road, we are putting 
ourselves at risk, we're putting our kids self at risk when we do pressure those doctors to give those antibiotics. And it may help by a couple days, but for the most part, if it is a viral infection, those antibiotics will not work and there will be more issues and complications down the road from having multiple antibiotic prescriptions and courses of antibiotics for simple viral upper respiratory cold and cough symptoms. Okay, so what do we do instead? <laughs> people are going to get sick, they're going to get colds, they're going to get infections. For those people to... Okay, sorry, over. People are going to get sick, they're going to get colds, they're going to get infections. The best way that we can, can stem off some of those is by doing good hand hygiene. That's washing your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds at a time. Anytime you're exposed to something that could be a potential trigger for an infection. After you wash, you wanna make sure you rinse your hands with all the soap to get all the germs off and then towel dry the hands. You can also use the waterless alcohol hand wash, which works very well also. Another way that we can help prevent infections is by staying up to date on vaccinations. And especially this time of year is the flu vaccination that the more people that we can vaccinate for influenza, then, then that decreases the risk of developing influenza in our community. And then it also helps prevent getting secondary infections from influenza. A lot of people will get influenza and they will get secondary complications or secondary infections such as ear infections or even pneumonias related to those influenza viruses. And so getting the vaccination definitely helps prevent some of those other more serious infections that then potentially do need antibiotic use. So the more time we spend on trying to stay healthy, the less we're gonna put ourselves in this position. Prevention is the number one way to prevent antibiotic resistant infections. It's all about prevention. And that's what we talk about to our patients all the time in, in my clinic is keeping your kids up to date on vaccination, using good hand hygiene, washing hands, and just staying away from people who are sick. And if your child is sick or you are sick, that you keep them out of daycare, out of school, or out of work if it's yourself to make sure you're not spreading it to other people so then the cycle just doesn't continue. So what are the reasons that you absolutely should bring your child in? So you think it's a cold or you yourself should go? When's, when's the turning point? Not that you're coming for the antibiotic, you're just coming to make sure. <laughs> what are those top things? <laughs> beavers. Start with beavers. Yeah. It can be very. <coughs> it can be very difficult for a parent or just as a adult to know when is the right time to go be seen by a medical provider. Some of the things that make us think an infection is more viral is when a person has the runny nose, either clear or thick mucus with nasal congestion, sore throat, drainage in the back of the throat, cough, low-grade fevers for three to five days is typically more of a viral infection. You can also sometimes get ear pain for the little kids associated with that. I typically tell my parents and patients that if they have fevers longer than five days that that would be a very good time to get evaluated by a physician looking for other secondary causes that could be related to that fever. The other thing I always want parents to be knowledge about is that if the child has increased work of breathing, where they're working hard to breathe, where they're breathing faster, where it looks like they can't catch their air, that's something more significant and that we need to see those children or those patients right away. Um, a cough can last up to two to three weeks after the runny nose and congestion stops. And that's another big thing that parents get worried about is the cough, but that can last quite a while after that. Multiple reasons include just irritation of the back of the throat that's still there. Another one is that it takes two or three weeks for the cough receptors to reset themselves before that cough completely goes away. So a cough in, in and of itself without any 
respiratory issues a lot of times is just related to that previous viral infection. Good. So patience too. Prevention, patience. Yeah. The two best things that I can kind of summarize this for is having patience and prevention. Being patient that your child will get sick. Now, if there's any concern that there's something else going on, always bring them in, obviously, but then also trying to prevent those infections as much as possible. And that's how we can stave off overuse of antibiotics and then developing these antibiotic resistant bacteria. Um, one more specific, how high a fever is too high? <laughs> None. <laughs> None? Okay, good. <laughs> See, that's a misconception well, yeah, out there. So that's hard. Um, they're a little out of questions. Um, there's a misnomer about how high of a fever is too high or is too dangerous. Majority of viruses, the fevers are usually 101, 102, but some children and some adults will have higher fevers just because that's the way their body reacts to the infection and it's not something that is more significant. Um, many people do get fevers of 103 and 104 even with viral infections. So the height of the fever doesn't necessarily give an indication if it's viral or bacterial. It depends on how the person is feeling, what other symptoms or issues the person is having associated with that fever. So we just don't have these hard and fast rules anymore. It used to be if it was green, if the temperature was this, that doesn't exist. No, no there's, I don't, there's no more hard and fast rules. <laughs> Do you have um, an online resource that you suggest to parents? Yeah, the CDC has done a very good job of trying to educate medical providers as well as the public with information on appropriate use of antibiotics, when to use them, when not to, what are some common misconceptions out there in the public. The CDC has a website, it's just cdc.gov, and there's a good section called Get Smart, and that has all the information about antibiotic resistance and all the things that we've talked about, and also gives more information, especially with the week of the anti antibiotic awareness week that's coming up next week this week perfect anything we missed 